you have TikTok and you like basketball, you probably know Showtown Hoops. Children of all ages, act like you know. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to Chill Town Hoops. I'm your host, Jermaine. The youngsters call me OG. My friends call me J-Dub. Let's get to it. So before the season started, I looked at the Denver Nuggets very much like I looked at the Milwaukee Bucks. And when you have the best player in the league, there's a chance that you're going to be successful. Just off, just off that alone. And... The Milwaukee Bucks, I felt the same way with having Giannis, who is arguably the best player in the league. I think he's the second best player in the league, but arguably the best player in the league. When you have somebody that good on your team, you have a shot. But as I've been watching them over the last couple of games, I'm thinking to myself, maybe Denver isn't as good as I thought they were. And I'm not sure that the best player in the league can save them for the problems that they have. Last night I watched them against the Brooklyn Nets and Joker is fantastic. I want to make sure that we're clear on on, on this right now. Joker is phenomenal. They run their offense through Joker. All their action goes through Joker. Joker is more of a distributor and a playmaker than he is a bucket getter. He wants to do that before he wants to score. And when he does score, he wants to do it within the offense. He doesn't want to do it where we're just clearing out and just giving him the ball and he goes. He doesn't want to do it that way. He wants to do it where you guys are playing off him and that opens up the offense, which opens up more opportunities for him. Problem with Denver's offense is, is that they have guys who don't shoot the basketball very well over these last couple of games. And because they don't shoot the basketball very well, now that leaves Joker to only score it himself which that's the game plan if you're whomever you are. Whomever you are, that's the game plan. We want Joker going off for 40. We want Joker going off for 50 because now that leaves everybody else to do nothing. And we know for a fact that Joker doesn't want to play that way. So I'm watching them last night, and what ended up happening was those guys were able to make some shots. Jamal Murray was able to make some shots. MPJ was able to make some shots and it was within the flow of the offense, which is how Joker wants to play. The problem last night is that their bench got completely and utterly demolished. Brooklyn, Brooklyn got almost 50 points from their bench last night, almost 50. When you're playing against a unit, when you're playing against a unit that you get almost 50 from, from their bench, whatever you do from your first five guys and in your bench, Gives you not much, that's where the trade-off is. That's exactly where the trade-off happens. And last night, I thought that Denver did a good job against Brooklyn's first unit, right? I, I, I thought that they did a good job against their first unit defensively. It was their second unit that they didn't get much from. That's where the problem lies. And because that's where the problem lies, Denver's going to have to figure out how they're going to put this whole thing together. They shot... Over, uh, they shot over 40% on the long ball last night, which was good. I think they shot over 50% from the floor. They didn't get anything from their second unit. And that was the – when I say they didn't get anything, I mean Russell Westbrook was solid last night. But after that, it got tricky. I thought Schroeder – who I got to give Schroeder more credit than 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 I do. And I'm not a, and I'm not a big – Schroeder fan, but I got to give him more credit than I do. He's a he's he's a baller. He is 100% a baller, and I got to give him more credit than I give him. I thought he did a good job last night, that two-man game between him and Claxton. I thought he did a good job in holding the defense because Claxton plays around the rim. Claxton doesn't do anything else offensively except play around the rim. That's it. And I thought that I, – I, I thought that Dennis Schroeder did a really good job in holding Joker, in holding Aaron Gordon when he was coming off that pick and roll and being patient and watching Claxton get to the rim. Once Claxton got to the rim, he was able to he was able to get lobs and, and able to get dunks. That's his strength. I thought that Denver's perimeter defense on his second unit was less than. I mean, Zaire Williams got busy last night. He got whatever he wanted, whenever he wanted. 
and he got downhill when he wanted. He got to the rim when he wanted. And that's going to be a problem moving forward with Denver's second unit. I mean, Saric didn't give them much. Saric is a guy who can knock down an open shot. He can rebound, but he hasn't been able to do that in this Denver system. I think Mike, I think Mike Malone's rotations were a bit tricky. I'm, I'm, I'm actually a fan of Christian Brown segueing into the KCP role. See, a lot of people thought that when Russell Westbrook a lot of people thought that when Russell Westbrook got the job, when he got on the crew, that he would be taken over for KCP. People still see Russell Westbrook like he was in Houston, like he was in Oklahoma City. Russell Westbrook is a rotation guard today. That's who he is. He was a rotation guard with the Clippers, and he was really good. He's a rotation guard in Denver. He was, at, he was specifically requested by Joker. Now, we're only four games into the season. But Russ was able to knock down some shots last night. He was able to get Joker the ball. So I think that he's going to segue into this rotation guard role pretty well. It's just that it's going to take a little bit of time because it's an adjustment playing with a guy like Joker. Now, when you have a guy like Christian Brown, who goes, which is the opposite, who goes from being a rotation guard to now being a starter and segueing into that role, that's also going to be a transition. A lot of times I hear people talk about Teams making moves in the offseason. Well, you didn't do this. You didn't shore up this. How about the fact that Denver already has a 3 and D guy in Christian Brown? The idea that, okay, you have to go out and get something to supplement what you lost in KCP. You already have that in Christian Brown, who can knock down an open shot. He just has to be more aggressive. And that comes from him now moving into that starting role and thinking more like a starter, as opposed to him as opposed to him thinking like a rotation player. No, I'm a starter now. And I'm playing starter minutes. I'm playing off Joker more. So I have to involve myself in the not, – it's not they are going to involve me. I have to involve myself in the offense more. And I think he's going to do that. I do think that he's going to do that. But as of right now, I am not fond of what I see with the Denver Nuggets. I think they're fool's goal. I don't like their offense. I don't like how inconsistent their shooting is. I don't like the fact that defensively they don't have a rim protector, which they didn't have in the past. It just seems more evident now. Teams get downhill. Watching watching Claxton last night get to the rim, it looked almost effortless, him getting to the rim. They have a huge prop. They have a hole at the rim. It should be Joker, but Joker isn't much of a rim protector. Joker can defend. Joker has, Joker has the ability to to dig joker has the ability to swipe the ball away joker isn't terrible he'll put a hand in your face and he'll contest shots but rim protecting blocking shots deterring shots they don't have that and that's going to be a problem moving forward for denver i'm not liking what i see in denver i think they're fool's goal right now and i know it's early in the season i do i know it's early in the season and i know that moving forward they're going to get better but what i see right now I think Denver is fool's goal, and they could be. They could be. On, they could be on the bottom half of the play of the playoffs of the playoff teams, not a play-in team, but maybe if they continue doing what they're doing. A team that I'm not very fond of, which is the Golden State Warriors. I'm even less fond of the New Orleans Pelicans. Off the strength that last night, they thought that they had an easy. They thought they had an easy win last night. Watching that crew walk into the Chase Center, no Curry, no Wiggins. They thought that they were just going to be able to walk by the Golden State Warriors. Golden State didn't do anything in particular that was elite last night. Nothing. They just played harder. That was it. They just played harder. And there are guys who I've seen throughout the course of my throughout the course of my life watching the NBA and 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 and, 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 and understanding players. There are guys that I've seen in the past that they just look like they're this, they're perfect for this particular team. Jaime Jaquez, I always bring him up as an example. Jaime Jaquez, when I see him, he just looks like a Miami Heat. He looks like he should be playing for the Miami Heat. He embodies everything that the Miami Heat are. That's him. Tough, unselfish, hard-nosed, dedicated, disciplined. That's him. 
when I watch Buddy Hill, I'm thinking he should be playing for the Warriors. He looks like a Golden State Warrior. He does everything that the Golden State Warriors do. I'm watching him last night. I'm thinking he should have been on the Warriors. I know why, because they had Klay Thompson. But watching him, he's everything that the Golden State Warriors are. I'm a long ball shooter, great in transition. I'm going to go hard. I can knock down open shots. That's who he is. And they got a band of guys that are like that. I thought that the New Orleans Pelicans before the season, I didn't think that they make the playoffs. And last night was evidence of that because, like I just told you, this is a team that just last night alone, they got outworked. They didn't, there was nothing that the Golden State Warriors did extraordinary except just play harder than them. And what was the problem with New Orleans? No Dyson Daniels, no Valanchunas, no Larry Nance. These are your dirty work guys. These are your rebounders. These are your defenders. These are your guys diving on the floor for loose balls. These are your these are your guys who are doing the extra stuff. And that was the stuff last night that beat the New Orleans Pelicans. Phil Jackson, he had a really good quote when he said that there's piano players and there's piano movers. And they got piano players, Brandon Ingram, C.J. McCollum. Zion, they got piano players. Who's moving the piano? Who's putting the piano on their back? None of those guys are doing that. And they lost three of those guys. So now what's going to have to happen is, is now you're going to have to supplement that. But they don't have that. I love their big guy, Nisi. I do. I, I love him. And he looks like he's going to be trouble for the rest of the league. He, he, he does. But they have to supplement losing those three guys because that loss last night was unacceptable them losing to a team without two of it without their two best players and your three best players are on the floor and you just get outworked that is unacceptable that is unacceptable and there's no way you can sell me that the new orleans pelicans are going to be viable in terms of a playoff team if that's how you're coming out mm -mm. no way you have teams and I think you guys have it too. There's a guy that's playing in the league right now that's an upper echelon player that you just don't particularly like his game. You respect his game and you recognize how awesome he is. You just aren't fond of his game. Well, that's how I feel about Luca. I think Luca is the best scorer in the game. I do. I think he's fantastic. I'm just not particularly fond of it. I'm not. I'm 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 I the antics, the athleticism. I'm just not fond of his game. But I can also without being fond of his game respect how good he is. And that's how I feel about Luca. I watch Luca's game and I think to myself, not how he's doing, not how is he doing it? Because I know how he's doing it. You know, Luca's a lot smarter than People give him credit for. He's a lot smarter. You know, he's he's been playing pro ball since he was 16. So he's a lot smarter than people give him credit for. But aesthetically, for me, I'm not blown away by Luca's game. But I can also respect how good he is. And I do. I respect how good he is. Anthony Edwards has tried to expand his game. He's fallen in love with the long ball. And I like that. I do. I do like that. But... The other stuff needs to get put together. And once he does that, I think we're going to be looking at a I, I think we're going to be looking at a at a way different player. So um we had some good action last night. We had some really good action, and we will continue this. I will be around. You know how to find me, you know where to find me. I will see you guys soon. But until then, put on a suit, drink water, don't drink and drive. Hey man, call your mother. When's the last time you talked to your mother? Call your mother. I will talk to you guys soon, but until then, take it light. Take it. Absolutely, man. It was good to see you guys. It's going down. 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 It's going down.